From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive this thing called life. Well, hello, Mr. and Mrs. America. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you to this Thursday's edition of For the People. It's April the 20th, 2017, and we got a great show lined up for you, including USA Radio Network's Wyatt Cox. And you're going to find out how I knew Wyatt many, many years ago and what he's doing with the radio theater is what they call it. Classic radio and uh, stuff that you'll just absolutely fall in love with. Um, It's going to be a great half hour with Wyatt and uh, high elevation. He's going to tell us how high he is, where he's living, what he's doing. And if you don't know that name, some of you, I guarantee, will know who he is. If you knew Chuck Carter and uh, that's many moons ago. But uh, he's off doing his own thing and has been for many, many years very successful. So look forward to that. Uh, Somebody that has experienced a great deal of success on the TV as well as radio, veteran broadcaster Bill O'Reilly is no more the O'Reilly factor, at least on FNC's Fox News channel. uh, Roger Ailes wanted to keep him, but the... uh, the uh, the brothers uh, definitely did not want to hang on to him, and there's just too many, too many um, sexual a- allegations um, of harassment with Bill O'Reilly that uh, the New York Times pretty much blew the lid off this story. And keep in mind, I have been a big fan of the O'Reilly Factor for many many years. And last week we did a show. Um, well, when I say a show a segment on the show, but I did spend a pretty good deal of time talking about sexual harassment and my view upon it, and there's no place for it. There really isn't. Um, It's a shame that these things happen. Too many women have come forward. Now, here's the dicey thing that you get into with sexual allegations um, or harassment. If you are harassing, maybe it was a few in the beginning. Maybe it was one. Maybe it was more. But you get down to this uh, this routine where you, you just, this is behavior. This is the stuff that you just cannot control or you don't care. Um, you, you start getting a reputation. You know, they say the bigger you, bigger you are, the, the harder the fall. And uh, I'm just afraid to say I think this is the case with Bill O'Reilly. I think he just got up there so big. I, and believe me, I love his commentary, love his books. Al Sharpton and a lot of the left are just just this great fodder. And this is a really big disappointment for so many people that looked up to Bill O'Reilly. And this is not the first time that something like this has uh, happened. Uh, The television business especially, there's a lot of harassment that does go on. And there's a lot of of competition, uh, a lot of backbiting that goes on because people are jockeying in for power. Everybody wants to be the star. Everybody wants to be the network star and the egos. I mean, you're lucky to get him in the door. And a lot of people have said that about O'Reilly. That uh, bigger than life persona um, followed him and he was a jerk. Now, I've worked in broadcasting and I got to tell you, I've met a lot of great broadcasters. Um, that were superstars and they treated people with dignity and respect. And then the superstars, uh, the big ones that actually are making money for the radio station. Yeah. I've seen it here in Tampa Bay. Everybody loves the person on the radio, but doesn't know who the person really is. And everybody talks crap about them in the building because they are not very nice people. But, but. For whatever reason, these people are able to pull it together behind the camera or behind the microphone, and they sound incredible. I mean, they are fantastic, but they're they're kind of like a beautiful disaster. 
And the more that I read about the O'Reilly situation, I mean, he is he's basically, uh, through his attorney, he released a statement, and it was this past Tuesday, blaming the far-left organizations for a smear campaign against him, saying that he'll be revealing evidence of his claim. I just, you know, there's too many women, just like Bill Cosby, have come come forward. Too many women have quit. Kirsten Powers, one of the big ones that used to be on O'Reilly for a long time. Uh, Gretchen Carlson, who left the network and was paid off. And the network paid over $10 million to keep women quiet. Why? Of course, those working with with Fox News Channel know Bill O'Reilly best. And you best believe that there'll be people that will come forward and say things and there'll be interviews and there'll be much more that will come out on the case. But this is a uh, not a good way to exit with an illustrious career with Inside Edition, uh, CBS and other networks that he's worked for. But Fox for 20 years and with the Killing series and with the children's book that just came out, it's just to me, it's. Uh, it's just not a. Um, good way to to retire and uh, close to 70 years old um you know a lot of accomplishments still nobody's going to deny his his uh on-year uh, brilliance and his persona I mean, it was big but man gone just gone and nobody thought it was possible just two weeks ago he just renewed his contract i mean this guy's got paid multi-millions of dollars uh, to do the O'Reilly Factor, but he was the highest grossing TV show on cable news, literally. And uh, started in the early 90s. And I remember when the O'Reilly Factor came on, he had more hair, that's for sure. But the ratings kept on getting bigger and advertisers uh, spent the money. But then they started leaving. These allegations went, uh, came out one by one, then more, then more. and And finally... Um, the Murdochs had to, they had to make a decision, you know, um, we're going to lose all our advertisers. We can't do this. And so there's great positioning jockeying now for, for shows to go into that time period. Tucker Carlson is going to go into that exact time period. And then the five is going to be moved to the 9 PM position. So there's been a lot of change. I mean, Megan Kelly to NBC, a lot of change, and sometimes, sometimes, sometimes change is good. Sometimes, as much as you hate it, um, I just can't see a guy like Bill O'Reilly um, going away forever. What I do hope, what I do hope from Bill O'Reilly is that if he has this issue and he indeed just has, you know, made fun of blondes and just uh, meshing their names together and just calling them a blonde fair, you know, that uh, they're all airheads. And they were very offended by this and um, very offended, deeply hurt. And, uh, again, some of the stuff could be fabricated. Some of the stuff, yeah, could have been made up. Maybe not all the stories were were accurate. Maybe people wanted to make some money. Maybe people wanted to get rid of Bill. I don't know. I don't know about this, but the problem is, the problem is, is that once you get into this rut of behavior, you get a reputation and your reputation kind of precedes you. And apparently through the building, it's Bill, it's Bill. And uh, women would complain through the years. People would complain through the years and then they would just cover for Bill and just say it's Bill. This guy makes oodles. He makes tons and tons and tons of money. We can't. We can't do anything. What do you want us to do? It's Bill. He's gonna. He's gonna throw his weight around. He's gonna do. He's gonna say what he's gonna do. But but on air, the on air persona, you would never know it. Squeaky clean. I mean, that would be like, who's another one there on Fox News Channel that's squeaky clean? Sean Hannity. That would be like. Uh, Sean Hannity having all these things thrown out. I think a lot of people would be shocked. What do you mean sexual allegations? Sean Hannity, he's doing it? Well, human beings are all susceptible to all of these things. You know, you might say, oh, geez, I would never do this. But power is a is a thing that sometimes it's um, it can get to your head, literally. It, um, 
you get too big for your own britches, as my mother used to say. And you get to that place to where you kind of feel like you're above it. And, um, you know, you, you shouldn't be touched. And apparently uh, there was dozens of women that have had these things happen to them, said about them. And and then it's the, the untold stories with, with women that don't want to be canned or fired or, um, you know, left in the cold because they said their story and then, you know, they, they never work again. But these are strong accusations. I mean, of accusations of sexual harassment. I have a feeling. And if you're Bill O'Reilly. And if you have the money. And if you have women, at least the ones that you know that you did not say, did not do. Um, then you'll fight for it. But if there's any truth to any of these accusations, I hope Bill admits to the ones that he did or the ones that Fox covered for him, because that doesn't look good. Come on, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to pay out. Now, the big difference between the other Bill, Bill Cosby, is, uh, well, I haven't heard anything about him you know, drugging anybody or putting him to sleep or having sex um, against their will, but sexual harassment can be uh, a very terrible thing for women, um, demoralizing and uh, things that uh, women don't want to talk about, but uh, are told to just be quiet and have to put up with it and eat crow every single day. And a lot of women put up with it every single day. And it's not fair. I don't condone the behavior. I certainly, uh, if again, he's done these things. I hope he gets help. Because if you can't control yourself, your message, it falls on deaf ears. And you get people like Al Sharpton. Oh, yeah. And I was just thinking to myself last week, <laughs> where's Al Sharpton? Well, he's back. And uh, he's talking about white nationalism. And if, if, if anybody's really happy today that uh, there's no O'Reilly factor... It would be Al Sharpton because Al Sharpton was a guy who sat there and called him a racist and a bigot and all these nasty things for so many different years. And um, I think he just eventually just got off the show on the Riley factor because they had to make a decision, you know, of who they put on there or not. But, you know, O'Reilly would basically say that he was a race baiter and, he, you know, he or or more specifically. O'Reilly for, referred to him as a race hustler. And uh, he says, Talking Points believes the day of race hustlers is coming to an end, according to the former Fox host, Bill O'Reilly. Uh, he says, uh, this, we, and them businesses get the country nowhere. Fair-minded Americans well understand that they are served problems. Uh, there are several severe problems, rather, in the black community that have to be solved. Hayes then asked Sharpton if he believed O'Reilly was a race hustler, and then the Reverend said that he didn't want to get into name-calling, but asserted that the uh, former broadcaster certainly promoted a very clear and in no way uh, nuanced white nationalism in saying that he um, was much like the president. So uh, interesting observation from Al Sharpton. And I got to tell you, I've never not been a huge fan of Al Sharpton. And one of the biggest reasons that I haven't been a big fan of his is because I believe that they don't really serve the African community or minorities in the way that they should. I feel like it's just a great opportunist, uh, kind of like Jeff, Jesse Jackson, feeding their coffers and aggravating those that are already aggravated, but not building them up, not educating these people. They get rich. And they flap at the mouth, and it's just lip service. I haven't seen anything meaningful out of that. They're just always, you know, argumentative. And I haven't heard any solutions coming out of his mouth that really serve uh, the inner cities. The only time that I've seen, you know, uh, Al Sharpton about is that the, they, get, they go to these rallies where everybody's pissed off, and then they're in the bullhorn making them angrier. So it's like going into a hornet's nest and squatting at 